So welcome back. I hope that you had some time to reflect on this whole idea of trustworthiness. You reflected on your own credibility, reliability, intimacy. We talked about these three components in fair detail and we had left the fourth element for today's episode. And that's what I'm going to take you through and then also get you through an interesting self-reflection exercise. So let's get into that without any further delay. And the final one, which is the denominator, is self-orientation. So it is, as the word suggests, it's the word, what is your focus? Is it on your own needs or is it on the needs of the others? Is it driven by selfishness? Is it driven by self-obsession? Is it driven by a fear that I will lose? So the whole idea is, I have to win, I have to get, I have to take. So that, if that is the driving motivation, then all the investments that we are doing in terms of building credibility, reliability, intimacy can be completely offset because everything is circled around me. The orientation is I, me, mine. As against, we are other oriented. So, I want you to revisit the formula and actually put a mathematical value to each of these four ingredients. Credibility, let us say you put a point of one. Reliability, you put a score of one. Intimacy, you put another one. So, the total of that gives you a three. Self-orientation, let us say, is also one. So now, obviously, your trustworthiness based on that equation is 3. Now, what happens when for the same constant value of credibility, reliability and intimacy, your self-orientation goes up to 2? Automatically, your trustworthiness drops by half. It comes to 1.5. So you would have invested a lot in terms of building credibility, reliability, intimacy in a relationship. But if that other person senses the fact that all that you're doing is because you want to benefit from it more than the benefit that they are going to derive from the relationship, the trustworthiness drops. There's a very beautiful statement associated with uh, Saint Yagnya Valka, Valkya on this particular aspect where he says, not for the sake of the wife is the wife dear to the husband, but it is for the sake of the husband that the wife is dear to the husband. Think about this. Not for the sake of the wife is the wife dear to the husband, but it is for the sake of the husband that the wife is dear to the husband. So this is a very clear statement of self-orientation. Now the same thing can apply to any relationship, put any relationship, husband, wife, of course, father, son, father, daughter, everywhere it will be the same. The only relationship that could be different is with a mother and a child. The relationship is completely different there. So coming back to the formula, what happens if a self-orientation were to go and double up instead of or rather uh, half, we talked about doubling, now let's talk about half. Then your trustworthiness is going to double. From 3, it's going to go to 6. So it emphasizes simply the fact that the lower our self-orientation, the higher the sense of trust that others have in us. Our trustworthiness goes up as it's, it's inversely proportional to the number that we associate with our self-orientation. So selflessness is a great virtue. Enough has been said about it in all our scriptures. It's all about giving more, give, give, give. That's what it is, right? Now it's easier said than done. We may not be able to give and become so selfless in the current scheme of things, but 
the understanding that my trustworthiness with the people that I deal with on a daily basis is influenced largely by my self orientation and only to some extent by the credibility, reliability and intimacy is a very important takeaway. When I read about it for the first time, it hit me right between my eyes. I said, that's so true. People spend so much time, incredible time on building the building blocks, if you want to call, of trust by credibility, reliability, intimacy and not taking precaution on what is the self-orientation in that, not being conscious about it. Now, I want you to pause at this stage and reflect on all the relationships that you have. Let us say, for the sake of argument, the most important ones at this point in time, whether it's a family, your social circles, that is your close friends or people in the community that you deal regularly with, and of course your work area. Whether you're an employer or an employee, doesn't matter, you will have people to work with. Try and put a value to each of these elements, put a column, credibility, reliability, intimacy, self-orientation and work out the trustworthiness for each of these people that you interact with on a regular basis and try and estimate how trustworthy do they view you as in that relationship. Be very honest with yourself. I would say you meditate, come out of meditation and then do this exercise so that you are not influenced by anything because you come out of meditation so it's a good time to do it. Of course after your AEIOU and other uh, post meditative practices this could be a small exercise that I would recommend you do this because it will change your perspective and also open up your eyes to how well am I dealing with my relationships what is the reliability what is the credibility what is intimacy self orientation and where do I need to do the checks and balances where do I lack because it could be skewed, it could be spread all over the place. In some relationships, your self-orientation may be very low. It could be with your child, because it's normal. Parents tend to be selfless when it comes to children. But it could be very high in your spousal relationship. It could be very high when it comes to dealing with people in your workplace. So where do you need to make those changes? It will it'll have tremendous impact on the way that you invest in reinforcing the trust, building the trust that in some relationships are slowly but surely eroding and you don't know the reasons why and when you read this and you go through this in its detail, suddenly you will see a lot of enlightenment come your way. Okay. Now after the self-reflection exercise, I also want you to think how can you go around building trust, what action specifically will you take? now that you realize which element is missing and also think about which is easier to spend time on. Is it credibility, is it reliability, is it intimacy or self orientation You may have your own answers, but research has shown that credibility, reliability is the tangibles. It is the person that you are from the outside. Intimacy and self orientation is the person that you are inside. So, how you are able to start looking more inwards, looking at that inner self of yours will have a significant impact on those two elements of trustworthiness. So, some of the more obvious things that you can do to build trust is listen more actively, empathize more consciously, look at where you can find a sharing of the agenda, common areas of benefit instead of just mm, the focus on myself. See how you can become more transparent, more willing to give ideas, information, knowledge, experience. Do small things, do not need to do big things like James Clear in his book Atomic Habits talk about 1% change every day. Likewise when you are looking to build trust you can say small things. Let me start returning calls. Let me respond to messages much more faster than I do. Keep those small promises. Right? 
not take my relationship for granted that okay this is a relationship that's not going anywhere so i can be very casual about it no every relationship has a certain shelf life it may not be visible to us but it fades so look at small things the low hanging fruits that you want to spend time in building your trust learn to become less judgmental about others and look at at your own self saying why am i doing things which are not really working towards the trust that i thought is happening between my me and that other person become less cynical look for the positives in people quite a few i would say there's hundreds of things one can talk about but more important is how much time you invest in refining your inner self because that's going to direct you in the right direction in fact if you do this the self orientation bit a little more carefully and with a little focus you'll find that that self orientation which is a denominator that's a small s the small self the external self but if i were to invest very very consciously with my daily practices heartfulness practices i can change that into the larger self and that larger self orientation what you call the capital s orientation can actually become an integrator rather than a denominator now imagine that higher self orientation is your denominator it actually will make trust absolutely infinite now think of somebody in your life who's currently in that position for for you maybe the first name that pops up is your parent or maybe your guru somebody that you know has quit selfless and who is looking to make you the person that you are designed to be so then what happens is there is a clear integration of all these elements and the trust is infinite so that's what i want to leave you with all at this point in time there's a lot to reflect on there's lots to work on because this is a extraordinarily powerful area of our lives because this is the glue that brings us together with the people that we live with we work with we interact with so daily investment into it in terms of all these reflections are going to have an extraordinary impact on the way your life is going to be in the long term so on that note i'm going to say goodbye and uh, i look forward to seeing you all again and also to the fact that you are just around the ending parts of this session i and i wish you good luck in your journey ahead goodbye sit comfortably and close your eyes softly and gently feel a healing energy move up from the earth into your toes feet and ankles feel your toes relax and your feet relax and allow your ankles to relax now feel this healing energy move up to your knees as it moves up it relaxes your calf muscles feel this energy remove all the tension from your knees now it is moving further up your legs into your thighs feel your thighs relaxing now the energy has moved into your hips and waist feel them relax
As the energy moves up, your lower back is relaxing. And your stomach. Now the energy has moved into your chest area. Feel it relax. Feel the energy move up your back and into your shoulders. Feel your upper back relax. And feel your shoulders simply melting away. The energy is now moving into your arms. They too are getting relaxed. Feel all the tension from your elbows leaving. And as the energy moves into your forearms, they too are getting relaxed. Remove all the tension from your wrists as the energy moves into your hands and right up to your fingertips. Now move your attention up to your neck. The energy is moving up and relaxing your neck muscles. Now, it is moving into your face, relaxing your jaw and mouth. The energy moves into your nose and eyes, relaxing them. Your cheek muscles are relaxed. Feel your earlobes relax. And now the energy is moving all the way up to the top of your head. Feel it relax. Feel your entire body is relaxed from top to toe. Now move your attention to your heart. Feel that a source of light is already present in your heart and it is attracting you from within. Do not try and see the light, just know that it is there, in your heart. Be open and receptive to a very subtle energy flowing into you. Relax into this feeling. If you find your awareness drifting at any time to other thoughts, don't fight them. Let them be. Gently remind yourself that you are meditating on the light in your heart. Allow yourself to become more and more absorbed within. Remain absorbed until you hear further guidance.
while keeping your eyes closed, gently come out of the state of meditation. Now gently open your eyes. Reflect on what you just experienced. Try and retain this condition as you return to your daily routine.